So in this video, I want to go over some very specific things, five specific things that can make this year the best year of your life. And if you use this year in and year out, your life's only going to get better and better. So let's dive right in. Well, for last week, I did a live webinar on really getting uh, getting your goals and taking off and uh, really changing your life. This week, I just want to go into five specific things that you can cover on your own that if you do every week will have a radical effect on your life. And those things uh, are very simple. They're very easy to do. And they're also very easy not to do. So that's what makes them hard is the fact that they're easy not to do. But if I promise you, if you do this for even three months, it's going to have a pretty damn good effect on your life. So let's dive in. Number one, you need to write your goals in the right format for you. That is huge. Not for everybody, for you. There's a way that you need to read your goals. And we're going to talk about what that is. It's very simple. See, when I write a goal, I write it so that it causes a literal endorphin pop in my body. It feels good to me. I change it. I adjust it till the goal feels like exciting. And I use three simple criteria within, within this goal writing idea. Number one, do I believe I can create this goal? If on a scale of one to 10, I want at least a seven. Number two, do I have love for this goal? On a scale of one to 10, do I love this goal? Number three, am I turned on for this goal? Is there turn on? Turn on comes from lower in the body. That's that almost like a sexual turn on, but it's more like a passion. Like I can't wait to do this. Love is I appreciate it. Turn on is I can't wait to take action. So those three criteria are essential in writing my goal. Now, the next thing I do is I write my goal in an affirmative way. I don't say I don't want to uh, be poor this year. I say, I say, and I don't say I want to make a million dollars this year. I say something like I am a millionaire uh, as of December 31st, 2023. Or another way to write it is I am so appreciative. Find the words that work for you. I'm so appreciative now that I'm a millionaire as of December 31st, 2023. Um, so that, so notice those two energies I just used there. When you write the goal, I'm, I'm writing the goal with either courage, acceptance, some aspect of love or peace right in there. I'm not writing below. I'm not saying, uh, I want the goal to succeed. I want a million dollars by December 31st. I'm saying peace as I am, uh, I appreciate, I love, I, I have appreciation now that I am a millionaire, uh, as of December 31st, 2023, uh, 2020, 2023, yeah, 2023, um, acceptance, uh, I allow myself to become a millionaire by 2023. I allow myself to have this, the perfect girlfriend as of June, uh, 15th, 2023. Uh, I allow myself to have an amazing girlfriend with beautiful blue eyes. Uh, you know, whatever is it that, that turns you on and excites you, that's number one. Okay. And then courage is I choose. I choose uh, killing it at the gym each and every day, building, uh, having, uh, uh, building 10 pounds of muscle and having a six pack by June 15th, 2023. And you see, uh, I, I have decided. I, I, decide, I, it's a, I have now made a decision that I will be. Um, in an amazing relationship by June 15, 2023. And, uh, and so the key is, does it cause you to feel really good? So that last one I just said, I got a little pop off of it, right? Or I have a loving, beautiful girlfriend that I care about immensely uh, by June 15, 2023. I have a loving, beautiful girlfriend and we have a giving relationship with each other by June 15, 2023. See, there's another one. I have, I am, I allow, I choose. Notice all of these are in the affirmative and they're dealing with the now. They're not dealing with past tense or some projection of the future. Uh, I, it's not in six months from now, I will have X because six months will always be six months every day you read it. So that's number one is you got to write the goal in the affirmative. Okay. And number two, make sure, and this is really important, make sure you have a weekly goal that moves you in the direction of your major goal. I always have one major goal and then I have some sub goals. So I'll have a weekly goal. This week, I am going to put myself on two dating apps or three dating apps by the end of the week. 
do I believe I can do that? Do I have love for the idea? Do I have turn on for the idea? Maybe I don't. Maybe I go, oh, my love for this idea sucks. My turn on for this idea sucks. You know what? I'd rather just go out and approach women. I'd rather go to uh, meetup groups. I'd rather go hang out. You know, there's a million. What am I inspired to do? And if it's going to be, I'm going to approach two women a day. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I am... I am turned on and excited now that I am approaching two women uh, a day, each and every day this week. And I'll try that. And I'll say, does my turn on there? Is my love there? Do I believe I can do it? And if that's high and I go to do it, that's perfect. Now, my goal in that is to, uh, well, I'll come back to that. I'm going to save that one for the end. Okay. So that's number two. Have a weekly goal. Now, every week when you hit that weekly goal, it's going to have a huge effect on how you feel about the long-term goal. Every day that you're reading the long-term goal and reading your weekly goal, I read them every morning, it reminds me again of the direction I'm going and what I'm creating. There was a guy named Mark Allen who ran a publishing company and he said that he there was a Korean billionaire he knew of that attributed all his money to reading his goals for an hour every day before he started work. So there's a powerful thing that happens when you look at your goals on a regular basis when you carry them on you look at it look at them the key is do they make you feel good if you're reading them every day and it feels like a job you got to change something you want to get to where it makes you feel good where when you're reading them you get turned on for the goals you get turned on for the weekly goals you get turned on for the daily goals maybe you read them every other day maybe you carry them in your pocket like mark allen used to and he said i imagine they're he carry them in his back pocket I imagine they're absorbing up through his butt his ass basically and uh he said that worked for him and he'd read him about once a week um so each person's a little different that way but you got to make sure you follow through on that i love looking at mine on a, a almost every day not every day but a lot of days okay next thing that's really important this is number three on the list make sure all your goals have feeling that means you get that endorphin pop if they don't they get heavier like i always ask does this goal when i read it make me heavier or lighter if i'm getting heavier then I need to do something about it. I need to change the wording, change the goal. You know, I got those three requirements. Do I believe I can have it? What do I need to do to increase the belief? What do I need to do to increase the love? What do I need to do to increase the turn on? And I, I work on increasing that feeling up. So I either need to change the wording or I need to clean up my emotional relationship to the goal. Maybe it's not hitting the goal this week. Maybe my I set the goal with the idea of falling in love with meeting the girl of my dreams, not meeting her. The idea of what it would be like to fall in love. And that's all I'm going to work on for the next month. What, exploring romance, love, what it is to be in love without trying to go out and fall in love, learning to love love for love's sake. And then the next month I'll start working on the dating because I'll feel better about it. See? So it's all about feeling. Everything I do is to calibrate really good feeling in relationship to what I do. If you have to step into tension, remember when this comes back to the feeling part, if you have to step into tension to get a goal, you want to make sure that you're at the courage level of emotion when you're stepping into tension. Courage is fun, it's exciting, it's adventure, it's decisive. If you understand my revealing process, check out my revealing process, the revealing process that uh, that we sell on the program to learn more about your emotional relationship. In the revealing process, I go through an in-depth study of these emotions and how they affect you. So if you're stepping to a lot of attention, attention from wanting anger and pride or lust, anger and pride, you will eventually most likely burn out. You need to get to that courage level to really transmute tension into power our success and happiness okay and when you're stepping into tension from courage it is fun it is a lot of fun now let's go on we, we've uh we've talked about three different things we write your goal in the right way make sure you have weekly goals make sure it has feelings number four in this area is um make sure that you don't set too many goals in any one area i look at it this way i have one core goal and it's always the same for me to have happiness for life in general, to love life, to wake up and get up in the morning, ready to seize the day, living from courage or above. That's my number one goal always. And it's a more abstract goal. So the rest of my goals are all concrete. And I have one goal in relationships that could be dating, that could be relationships, that could be sex. I have one goal in health that could be losing five pounds, building five pounds of muscle, changing my diet, something like that, uh, hitting a certain percentage of body fat. Um, 
learning a, a new way of working out that I'm into right now called functional patterns. And uh, one goal, so I got relationships, health, and wealth. One goal in wealth. You know, launching a business that I net, I create, uh, I have $100,000 worth of sales in a month. That could be a goal. Or maybe it's $10,000 worth of sales in its first month and then $100,000 by its six months or whatever makes sense to you. And I set that one goal. When I hit the one goal, then I set another one immediately as, the, as that goal approaches. The goal is just a pointer to go in the right direction. I don't want competing goals. So I set one goal for each area of my life. If you really want to be obsessed, you can set one goal for one area of your life, put all your energy into it. A lot of really successful people have done this. They've complained later that they had to sacrifice other areas to do it. And big one is money. A lot of people who are really money obsessed will set, will go out like Mark Zuckerberg, set one goal for his business and say, screw health, relationships and everything else. It's all about that business. But all that energy goes into that business and it can really take off. OK, so have uh, one goal for each area or if you want to be crazy, you have one goal overall. But I, I, I explained how I do it. I have my core overarching goal and my three goals. I have a little uh, other little sub goals that I write. I don't even really call them goals or things that are going to happen this year. And I just say, you know, God's going to take care of these. That's how I look at it. They're, they're going to happen in their own perfect time, in their own perfect way. And I write them on a, and I read through them. And I laugh at them and then I don't I don't make any super effort to make them happen. And then the, the last thing, step number five, I use revealing to release all resistance to the goal every day. Now, you don't have to do it every day. I try to do it every day, but uh, I never, I always do it because I love doing it. I love releasing and revealing and uh, revealing and releasing or whatever you want to say to clean up my subconscious mind and my emotional relationship to what I'm creating. So the more you clean up your emotional relationship and stay in cap with your goals, like you could, you might have a goal that's a six or a five when you, when you write it, you know, you write a, you write a goal about having that perfect relationship and it's kind of heavy, but you release on it every day. And a week later, maybe that's your action for the week. It's a seven or it's an eight and you're super excited about it. That's the power of revealing. So definitely check out the revealing process if you haven't done that already. Um, and, uh, and the last thing that I really want to share with you, this is the bonus. This is the one that makes it all worth it. This is the thing that's going to change your life this year that I promised in the beginning of the video is that if you hit step number two, make sure you have a weekly goal and you start hitting that step 80% of the time. You keep readjusting the first months. You're, you're going to hit it, not hit it, quite to hit it. But you start solidly setting goals that you can hit every week. And you start hitting them every week. This goal, I hit this mini goal for this week and this mini goal. And you get it like five, six weeks in a row. You hit those mini goals moving towards your big goal. You write them down in your in your uh, success journal, confidence journal, courage journal, you could say. And uh, every week you write down all your successes that you're getting and you're, that you're hitting at least 80% of the time, 90% of the time. Because you're setting, because you're really setting them right. You're setting something I believe and I, I know I can do. I believe I can do. I'm in love with and I'm turned on for and you're and you're writing those down, you're going to start to get motivated. You're going to start to get turned on. You're going to start to get excited and your faith and expectancy of hitting your goals is gonna, only going to go up through the roof. And then what's going to happen is that big goal is going to be inevitable. You're going to start moving towards it at lightning speed, especially a few months in, six months in when you've been hitting goals like crazy, little mini goals, then that big goal is just a, a, it's just a domino effect. It's going to happen down the road with the dominoes. It's guaranteed. And that's what makes this process so exciting. So hopefully you enjoyed that bonus, uh, bonus piece of content. It's to me the key that changes everything. Not beating yourself up in the beginning for not hitting goals, but just adjusting till you can reach at least. It might take a month. It might take a month and a half, six weeks to start hitting your goals 80% of the time. But then you're going to learn a lot about yourself, your follow through, what you do. You're going to reset your, your objectives until you're hitting that goal 80% of the time. And that's what's going to change your life. So get out there. I'm going to invite you to get out there and tear it up this year. Make this the best year of your life. Make next year even better. If you want more help with this, definitely check out the Fresh Start program or my Revealing Process program. Uh, they're both on the Fearless website. We can have links in this video to them. And if you want a little bit more information on hitting your goals, check out my live stream, which is recorded on YouTube from last week. And we'll put a link in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Definitely comment. We want your comments in the video. I want to hear what you want more of as we're going through the year. Give me a like if you can. I would love to have that like if you really like this video and you like that bonus content. Uh, make sure to hit subscribe and that bell notification so that you keep, don't miss any of the content because I'm going to be working on still bringing you awesome content even though we don't have any workshops this year and uh, helping you to have the best year of your life. And with that said, remember, 
only the confident really live. Take care. Have a beautiful day.